And now, Autolite presents Suspense. Very stern, Sir Allington. I feel stern. In fact, I, I'm furious. Furious. Oh, for heaven's sake, why? Why? What on earth possessed you to invite that medium here, that big medium, tonight? I don't know. I, I thought it might be rather fun. Fun? You've very little sense of the fitness of things, Mrs. Eversley. Have I? It's a very tactless thing to do and dangerous. It was. You know perfectly well this party was arranged so that I might have somebody under observation without their being aware of it. Yes, of course I know that, Doctor. I agreed to help, didn't I? Then surely you must understand that a person whose mind is unhinged is under severe strain. Who knows what impulses may be released by that, that medium tonight? Well, she's not a real medium. Uh, You'd better go in now. clamoring to get through. Oh, it's you at last, Shimakari. Have you anything to tell us? Uh, I have message for lady. Message of warning. Do not despair. You must avoid dark mountain forests. If you want to reach sunlit peaks, go round the bank. I'm not going on any mountain climbs. It must be for you, Claire. Shh. What do you mean by dark mountain forest? Shadows. Shadows. Messages for lady with scar. Oh. Who's sending the message? Someone who loved you. Message from another trying to get through. Claire. Is your husband here? Yes, I'm here. Jack Trent, this is to warn you. Very important. Stay away from your house. Take advice. <laughs> Do not go home. Jack Trent, you have very good friend here. That must be me, Jack. Friend, be careful. It is dangerous. Is there anyone else here who shouldn't go home? Yes. One other. Your uncle. I'm listening. Stay away from your house, uncle. All three men, be careful. But one in particular. One. <laughs> well, be 
think we all are. I'm back, am I? Lights, please. Did it go off well? I hope so. Oh, we're all terribly impressed. Thank you, Mrs. Catamore. Did Shiromaki come through? Most definitely. Uh, what's his nationality? Oh, he lived on Formosa in the 10th century. Hey, I'm dead beat. Oh, that, that, that fairly takes it out of one. They're all very quiet. There's a queer feel about this room tonight. What sort of a feel, Mrs. Catamore? One that I don't like, Mrs. Trent. What precisely do you mean by that, madam? Well, unlike you mental specialists, we who deal in psychic phenomena touch only on the intangibles. I suppose you would insist that I was melodramatic if I said there was death in the air tonight. I might not, Mrs. Cattermole. Well, I consider that a concession from Harley Street. It deals in the studies of the mind. I bet they're cluttered up with all sorts of psychic delusions. Hey, Sir Arlington? Yes, I may. Let me help you, Claire. Now, I believe all this has been too much for you. Don't be silly. I'm quite all right. Can I get you something, Claire? A drink? No, please. I'm quite all right. I don't want any. Uh, Mrs. Catamore, when I asked you to come this evening, I believe you said you'd like some supper after oh, the play. Oh, indeed I would. I'm just famished. Well, let's come in the dining room. Well, that glass of stout I will open it. Well, it uh, wasn't a bad performance by the old faker, was it? Are you quite sure that it was a fake? Of course, a simple act of ventriloquism. But those warnings or premonitions? Some dialogue to give you the thrills you pay for. I'm not so sure. You can't deny that there are such things as those impediments. You speak as though you've had an actual experience then. As a matter of fact, I have. Sometimes you get a warning. It's like a, a red signal, meaning danger. <laughs> no, really. It's happened to me several times. Matter of fact, it saved my life once during the war. No wonder you were so impressed by what Mrs. Catamore said. Well, it wasn't so much what she said, but I had that same feeling as I came into this room tonight. The red signal. How strange. I wonder if you can get the signal when it's meant for someone else. That is Bumbo Jumbo swilling Guinness. How about our having a little alcoholic refreshment? Darling, that's the most sensible thing you've said all night. Come along, Dermot. What is it, Claire? I want you to go away for a time. To go away? But why? You're Jack's good friend, aren't you? Yes. That's part of the trouble. I've let myself grow fond of you, too fond. Claire. No, you must go away. I'm not very happy with Jack, but I can never leave him ever. Not if you know that I'm in love with you. You've got to forget about me. I can't. I've always loved you, ever since we first met. I know, but now it's too late. Why should it be? Because I cannot... Oh, Claire, uh, Jack asked me to tell you that it's time you were going. The fog's getting worse. Yes. Did he drop Mrs. Catamore after he'd taken you home? Yes. The fog is bad. I'd better go. Dermot, good night. Good night. Thank you for telling me the truth. You've been very tactful. Uncle, what did she mean, thank you for telling me the truth? Are you here in your professional capacity tonight? Maybe. At whose request? No, but drive home with me, will you? I, I've got to talk to you. You sound very serious, Uncle. I am deadly serious. Up, Milton. 
Uh, decant a bottle of the 98 Colburn, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, what'll you have, Dunnett? Oh, I think I'll stick to Scotch, thanks. Well, I... I sent you that. I won't keep you long. Is it, uh, is it my fancy, or... Is there a certain, uh, town dress between you and Mrs. Trent? Look, Tare and Jack are my good friends. That is hardly an answer. You may think my views on divorce old-fashioned, but I must remind you that you are my nearest relative and my heir. There's no question of divorce. It better not be, and for a reason that I understand far better than you. You guessed right. I was there tonight in my professional capacity. There's certain information I had to give it to Mrs. Trent tonight. You mean the information was a diagnosis? Exactly. There is strong suspicion of insanity. Close observation was necessary to confirm this diagnosis. I'm going to recommend a commitment. I can't believe it. The extraordinary sanity of the insane is very complex, but in this case, the evidence is conclusive. The patient must be placed under restraint. Restraint? But why? My dear Dermot, cases are only placed under restraint when their being at large may be a menace to the community. What sort of menace? In all probability, some sort of homicidal mania. Poor Claire. So she knew. That's why she said I must go away. And she has more sense than I gave her credit for. We must all pity her. I don't believe it. Doctors can make mistakes. I don't believe it. I don't propose Even to if I... it's true, I don't care. I love Claire, and if she'll come with me, I'll take her away. I understand, my boy. If you do this, I shall have to reconsider my will. I don't care what you do with your money. I shall look after Claire. A woman who... If you say another word against I... her, I'll... Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. You, uh, you can go to bed now. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Uncle, I'm... I'm sorry I spoke the way I did. From your point of view, you're right, of course. But I've been in love with Claire for a long time. And if Jack can't, can't take care of her, I will. I think that's all we have to say to each other. Good night. Dermot West? What do you want him for? I'm Police Inspector Federal of Scotland Yard. He's wanted for murder. And now, the second act of The Red Signal, starring Tom Helmore and Beatrice Strait. Wanted for murder? Yes. Yeah. About an hour ago, he shot his uncle, Sir Ellington West, of Harley Street. Are you Mr. Dermot West's man? That's right. His valet. Clark's the name, Nobby Clark. I say Nobby, huh? Is your master at home? No, sir. 
You don't mind if we come in? All right, uh, Benson, you better stay right there by the door. I'll have a look around. Well, now, Mr. Nobby Clark, what time do you expect your master back? Oh, should be home any time now, sir. He's out at a party. Yes, we know all about that. So, oh, this is, uh, one of these one-room deluxe flats, eh? You don't sleep here, do you? No, sir. And what are you doing here so late? You always wait up for his nibs? Well, only when he goes out to party, sir. See, uh, sometimes he needs a bit of help getting into bed. <laughs> you mean he drinks? Oh, no, sir, no. He just likes a few spots when he's out on a razzle-dazzle. <laughs> uh, pardon my curiosity, Inspector, but I can't quite take this murder in. Could there be some kind of an error? Oh, no, my lad, there's no error. Sir Ellington Servant Milton overheard your master threaten him in an argument over the old boy's will. Right after that, Milton heard the shot. He rushed downstairs and found the old boy slumped across the bar. Shot right through the heart. So it was this Milton's yarn what clinched it, eh? Tight as a drum, now, baby lad. Well, lots of people make idle threats. Uh, how'd you like a nice glass of ale, Inspector? I got some basses number one in the fridge. Aye, that'd be a bit of all right, eh? That is number one. <laughs> that would set real warm on a cold, foggy night like tonight, eh? Up to it, be lad. <laughs> oh, uh, smart of I smoke? Help yourself, Inspector. grant you that this young chap put on the act of leaving, but he must have come back because not five minutes later, Milson heard the shot. Yeah, but you make it a, looks like the murder weapon been fired recently. But then that means he... All right, Mr. Dermot West, come on out. Police are at my flat. I gave them the slip, but they winged me. It's nothing much. Well, here, sit down. I'll fix it for you. Where's Claire? She's in the bedroom. Why? Is she all right? Well, of course she's all right. Why shouldn't she be? Well, don't you know what happened? Well, I do, as a matter of fact. The uh, police have just been here, obviously making a tour of everybody at the party. Here, uh, sit down. Hold this, will you? Jack, I'm desperately worried about Claire. You didn't let her out of your sight, did you? After the party. This may hurt. Of course I let her out of my sight. Well, I was taking Mrs. Cattermore home. Why? Look, my uncle told her, told me about her tonight, before he was shot. It looked pretty bad for her. We've got to protect her. What do you mean? Well, the police found a gun planted in my flat. Wasn't it your gun? I haven't even got one. There's only one thing to do. Go to the police and tell them everything. I would. But there was something else at my flat. What? This. Claire's lipstick. That's what I was afraid of. Do you think she dropped it? 
What are we going to do? We've got to protect her somehow. Call the police. Tell them it was your gun. Yes, I already thought of that. Hello? Damn it. I didn't drop the lipstick. Claire. I've never been to your flat in my life. Jack, you picked it up at the party. You didn't. No. Yes, you did. I saw you. No. Did you know about him? Boynton promised me he'd tell you. So it's you who is a sick one. And it was you who shot him. Yes, I killed him. Because he and Claire were trying to put me away. I waited outside his house while you and he were talking. Then after you left, I, I went inside and killed him. Then, then I drove to your flat. And since you were walking, I, I had plenty of time to get there and plant the gun. Claire! Oh. You love him, don't you? That's why you and Alison wanted to put me away. Well, I've never been untrue to you, Jack. And you love her, don't you? Suppose I did. I've never tried to take her away from you. And you never will. Do you remember what that medium said? Well, I'm going to make it come true. Ah. It's too bad I didn't get you. Why didn't you tell me about Jack as soon as you knew? Because I loved you and I knew we could never be married. Yes. I see what my uncle meant about there being no divorce. Yes. They'd never free me from a husband who was out of his mind. is entitled Death Drum, a story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Also, be sure to listen to Suspense each Monday night on your CBS radio station. This is the CBS Television Network.